Okay, in this video, I'm going to try and explain a small bit of theory. And this is in regard to the method we use in order to calculate the minimum distance between two objects when we're dealing with relative velocity. And this specifically deals with what's written on page 95 of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics, where the method is shown, but not the, exp the explanation. Now, of course, you don't need the book, because I can read it out to you, but uh, I'll just show what the book sh it says. We're given a y-axis, drawn better than that, of course. We're given a y-axis and we're given an x-axis, and these make our xy plane or our Cartesian plane. And then what we're given is a couple of positions, or points, we'll say. So this one here is called s, and s is equal to 0, negative 60, and we're given a point over here, t, which is equal to negative 64, 0. And what we, uh, what's worked out, I suppose, in this particular question is the velocity of uh, one particle with, you know, with respect to the other. All right, so in this case, what actually happens is they work, the, the question worked out the velocity of t relative to s, vts, which means that, or not vts, the other way around, excuse me, vst, because what that means is that t is stationary, and it looks at what happens with, to s, because as Einstein said, everybody who is moving can consider themselves to be stationary and, every, and the world moving relative to them, or they can consider themselves to be moving and the world stationary relative to them. So what this means is that T says he is stationary, or he is in a frame of reference whereby he believes he is stationary, and he is viewing the world as if he was a stationary object, even though, of course, he is moving. So if he's stationary, and it doesn't matter which way these, these particles are moving, but it was worked out that the velocity of S relative to T would have been something along these lines here would have been like that, okay? And I'm going to draw, I'm just going to call it V, um, VST, like so. Alright? Now, what we're asked to do is find the minimum distance between the two objects. And the definition of the minimum distance is when there's a 90 degree angle, like so, between the two objects. Now, the easiest way to do this is to say T is stationary and minimize the distance between T and the line of the vector velocity s v v s t, all right. So how is this done? Now in the in the question we're given, or in the kind of the the bit of theory, it's worked out that v s t is equal to negative five i hat, positive twelve j hat. So it's a negative i uh, vector and a positive j vector, which is like that, which is just fine. Now of course the slope of this, and just to remind people of slopes. So the general or variable for it is m, and people say it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is the same as delta y over delta x, the change in y over the change in x, or if you're dealing with differentiation, it's dy dx, or another way of writing it, and this is the fourth and final way, you can also say it is the, th the tangent of the angle, theta. So in this case, it would be 12 over negative 5, the opposite over the adjacent, and that would be equal to the slope. All right, so that, just going to note that here, the slope of that particular line is negative 12 over 5, so I'm going to say m is equal to negative 12 over 5. Now, just bear with me for a moment, we want to get the, the equation of this line, and in order to get the equation of a line, you need two pieces of information, and if you have those two pieces of information, you can do that. So you need the slope of the line, and you need any point. You only need a single point on the line. Now we have the slope, because it's negative 12 over 5, and now we need a point. So we need to know at least one point where the, uh, the we'll say, the line goes through. Now in this case, because we're talking about v, the velocity of s relative to t, it means that t is stationary, and s is moving. So all the points along this line are coordinates, or position coordinates, for the particle s. So, for example, ne 0, negative 60 is a point where the particle s has gone through relative to t. So we have this. We can say the point is 0, negative 60. And we can say, of course, the slope is negative 12 over 5. All right? Now, then just setting, setting up the scene and going through this reasonably thoroughly, now, if we also look at the equation of the slope, we had y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, of course, 
a bit of first year maths here, if you just rearrange this equation, you're going to get that y2 minus y1 is equal to the slope times x2 minus x1. Now, of course, y2 and y1, these are just points. Like, so you would have had the point x1, y1, and the point x2, y2. And all it's doing is getting the, dis the distance between, or the difference between the y's and the difference between the x's. All right? Another way, for example, you could write this would be delta y is equal to m delta x, okay, which corresponds exactly as we've, with, with things we've said before. All right, so let's just get the equation of the line vst, just just for the moment, okay. We'll do this quite uh, quite slowly, we'll say. So we get y2, we don't know. We'll just say that y2 is a general any point other than the, the point that we're going to plug in. So we're just going to call it y in actual fact rather than y2. So we have y minus 0, no, not 0, minus, it's actually negative 60, like so, is equal to negative 12 over 5, x, x minus 0. All right? And you'll get, as a result of that, just, just re do a small bit of rearrangement, and you get that 12x plus 5y is equal to 300, or negative 300, or you could say, excuse me, 12x plus 5y plus 300 is equal to 0. And that is the equation of this line. So that will uh, that will tell you whether or not a point is on that line. Now how do we find out? How do we, how do we kind of convince ourselves that that is the case? That this equation will give us whether or not a point is on the line. Okay, so let's just write the equation again. We had that uh, 12x plus 5y plus 300 was equal to 0. Now, are there any other points on this line? Can we get a point on this line? Well, what if we set x equals 0? Well, if x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 300 over 5. So it becomes negative 60. So y is equal to negative 60. So you could say a point on this line is 0 minus 60. And that's the point, of course, we've gotten before. And what if this time we set y equal to 0? So y is equal to 0. Therefore, x becomes negative 300 over 12. All right, uh, I just, my arithmetic is, is awful, so I'm just going to do this in the calculator altogether. So we get 25. So it's negative 25. So another point which is on that line is negative 25, 0. Now, let's just prove that these, are, these points are on that line and, sh and show how, how, we, how we can show that. If I put these points into this line, I'll get zero. If they're on the line, or into this equation, excuse me, I will get zero. And if I get zero, then they are on the line. So let's just plug it in. So we're going to get 12 times zero plus five times negative 25 plus 300 is equal to zero. Well, this, of course, is zero. Five times negative 25 is negative 300 plus 300 is equal to zero. And you get that, that's correct. So you know that a point is on this line if you put it into the equation and you get zero. Similarly, if you put this, this point in, you will get zero as well. All right? So that's how you know it's on it. But what happens if the point is not on it? Okay, let's see what happens if the point is not on it. So what if we put in the point negative 64, zero? So you get 12 times zero plus five times, no, we don't get that, that's... That's ridiculous stuff, okay? So we get 12 times negative 64 plus 5 times 0 plus 300. All right, so 12 times negative 64 is equal to negative 768, and we get a plus 300. And what does that equal to us? That equals to 468. All right? Now, what is that? That is non-zero. Okay, so what that means, of course, this point is not on the line. But what, what else does it mean? Is there any, any other meaning in this number? Does this number mean anything else? I'm telling you that it does. I'm telling you that that is the number of units. Now, units of what, what unit exactly? I'll explain in a moment. But the number of units that this point is away from this line. That's what it tells you. Okay, so what we need to do is convert this number into something that we're able to make use of. 
and I'm going to tell you the unit that it is. Now, we know, uh, let me rub out what we don't need here, so we have 468, right, just one, one moment here now, and just, I'll just make this all very explicit, so we have 468 corresponding to the point negative 64, 0, like so. All right, now we also know that VST is equal to negative 5 i hat, positive 12 j hat. What is the magnitude of the vector VST? All right, we know this is just a bit of Pythagoras, so we get the square root of negative 25 to be squared plus positive 12 to be squared. And we square root that whole thing there, and you're going to get an answer of 13. Is that correct, is it? Uh, yeah, oh, not 25, that's, why did I write 25? Yeah, 13, there like that. All right, that's equal to 13. So the magnitude of this vector is 13. And I'm going to tell you that that is our unit. That is, well, it's, no, that isn't our, that's the unit we want, all right? So we're, we're given a number here, 468. And what we want to do is find out how many 13s are in 468, and then we'll know exactly how far we are from the, the line. And that's what we're doing. So if we divide 468 by 13, we're going to get an answer of 36. And that's 36 meters. So what I'm saying here is that this number, 468, is a unit which we don't know. It's some, some unit. It doesn't really matter what it is, okay? And how to convert that number there into meters is to divide by our, we'll say, our meter stick, if you want to call that. How many you know, how many of our little meter sticks fit in it. So you could look at it like this, if, you're just, if you can look closely there now. It's like saying, well, we have one of these, that's one of the vector VST, and we have two, we have three of those, and in actual fact, it turns out that we have 13 of those, or excuse me, 36 of those. There are 36 times the, the vector VST in, this, in the distance from here to here. 36 of those. And we know that because the magnitude or length of the vector VST is 13 units. So there are 36 of those in this 468 that we have. And that gives us the 36 that we need. Now, there's one final thing I'll say about this. If the number turned out to be, if, the, if this number here, 468, was a, a negative number, all right? It, would, it actually is a negative number. So we have a negative 468. So we have negative 468 over 13, giving us a negative 36 meters. Now we know, of course, that the di the distance is a scalar and can only have it's only it's it's a scalar and it can only be a, a positive number because, of course, if I told you that I'm negative 36 units or meters from a wall, you'd say, well, that means nothing to me. So the only thing we need to add into this is that we go for the absolute value. All right, which just turns this into a positive number. All right, so can we just uh, summarize what I was saying? Let's just summarize this. What we need to do is get the following. You get the equation of the line moving through, uh, m moving through the moving the, the, the moving, we'll say, object. In this case, our moving object is S, because we said T thought it was stationary. So we get the equation of the line. Of course, for that, we need a point, and we need a slope. All right? Next, what we do is we put a point uh, where our stationary object is into this equation. And finally, we divide by the magnitude of our velocity vector. All right? So just finally, and it's just just to illustrate the, in this particular way, in this, this particular example, that exact formula would have been as, it would have been as follows. It would have been the magnitude of 12x plus 5y plus 300 
divided by the uh, the magnitude of the vector VST, where we put in the point negative 64, 0. All right? And that would give us the correct answer. So I hope that was a small bit of an insight into it. I know that that was a reasonably long explanation. But uh, relative velocity is something which people seem to find very difficult. And, you know, perhaps that might happen. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.